we are in Boca Raton, Florida. We're a couple minutes walk from the ocean, a couple miles from the pier and all the restaurants and stuff, like close enough that you can ride a bike or, or a golf cart. I don't know, beautiful skies, nice people, <laughs> lots to do. Welcome to Boca Raton, Florida. So yesterday we decided we were gonna go deep sea fishing on the, on the boat. And uh, we met up at the dock and the boat was waiting for us there. The captain kind of gave us the rundown. Different times of year we get different types of fish coming through. Like winter time we get more sailfish, king mackerel. Summertime we get kind of a range of all different species. Tuna, kings, wahoo, sail, so it just depends on the day. He said there's gonna be some two foot waves. When we finally came out, it started looking a little a little rough. Hey, how big was it out there? How big? Five? I said we send it. I never was out before. When we would go over the big wave, I would just like hold my breath and count like and we were in the air and then slam on the water. <laughs> it did calm down a little bit and we were able to go with the waves and, and actually even sit, sit down on the side of the boat and reel in some fish that we caught. The reef kind of drops off. There's a ledge here in about 100 feet of water and a lot of the pelagic fish that we're targeting will kind of swim up and down this ledge. And when we get a bite, Captain Chris will let Dimitri and PC know and they're gonna crank in the fish. That run like that, only a big tuna or a wallow would do that. If I make one mistake, the fish will get away. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just reeling. Double. Oh, double. double. Fish oh, nice PC, that's PC. Right, well, let's kill him. <laughs> More bait. Jesus. I'm gonna turn us, I'm gonna turn us around. Just, no! Ah. Let's get this fish. Oh my God, what was that? What did PC yeah. have? <laughs> It was like a tuna. Tuna, tuna, big yeah. tuna. Yeah. There we go. Nice tuna. All right, nice tuna. Nah, that's a big boy. That's a dinner tonight. It wasn't easy, but we did it. That's pretty awesome. Dimitri just got his first blackfin tuna. We call that about a 10 to 15 pound tuna. It'll be super good for the dinner table. Uh, you can make sushi with that, poke bowls. Uh, my favorite, personal favorite, is to steer it. We're gonna try to run back through that school and try to get some more. Another blackfin tuna looks like, yeah, oh. decent, he's not bad. I good. You see all that beautiful gold, little rainbow color. See these fins right here? These things fly through the water. Jumping back there. It could be a big barracuda or a mahi, I don't know. This guy broke for what? He's got no shoes, no gloves. With the six foot waves, he's pulling the fish onto the boat. Oh, hell yeah. So the biggest one we got was a probably 10, 15 pound barracuda. And those things are freaky. Oh, baby. Woo -hoo -hoo. That's got some teeth on him. <laughs> I was gonna take a picture with that barracuda, but Chris said he's still a little bit alive. So I'm not touching him until he's completely dead. Until I can see it in his eyes. Look at those teeth. We thought it wasn't gonna be that rough out there. When we got out, it was some significant waves. I mean, five, six, six foot waves. We survived. You know, we had to, we had a man down the whole time, but <laughs> he hung in there. Yeah, no, it was just a, a rough day. I think I didn't take my Dramamine early enough. I took it like an hour before we went out. And I had one, and I should have had two. So we caught a couple tunas, a barracuda, and there was one, I believe, a sea monster that got away from us. We don't know what it was, but it snapped the line. I'm thinking it's, it was a 10-foot shark or something. 
but we'll never know. The seas were too rough, so we decided to come in and fish in the inlet. There's the king mackerel, and then we're gonna save some of his guts for these tarpon, tarpon bait. You wanna grab me one of those tunas? You wanna try a little piece? Sure. There you go. That's good to go. Yeah. That's a big chunk. Might be a little chewy, but it's gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's right from the source. It doesn't get any fresher than that. Here, you can go ahead and give the other side a go. He just kind of left me here, huh? <laughs> All right, it's not bad. Not bad for a first time filleting it. That's not bad. You get a C, <laughs> solid C on that. <laughs> Since it was a little rough, you know, we cut the trip short out there and we decided to come in here in the intercoastal and uh, do some fishing for some tarpon. So, you know, this is where we fillet up our fish. And a lot of times we get some big tarpon, sometimes over a hundred pounds, will come in here and eat the scraps. See, that looks pretty good, right? That's what the tarpon are gonna think too. He's here, yeah, circling around us. Monster one. You see him come out of the water over there? He's bigger than me. I don't know if it was a tarpon, but some maybe smaller fish. There was one just swimming around all the time, so we tried, we tried to get him, we tried to get him, but he, he was too smart. He didn't want to take our, our bait. But we did catch some catfish. Catfish. Look that sucker up here. Yeah, that's a nice one. Fatty. That's about as big as I've ever seen one. All right, Dimitri, hope you had a good time today, man. Uh, I had a good time, it was nice meeting you. Thanks for taking and, us out. Uh, yeah, the waves, was were, awesome. waves were a little bit bigger than we had hoped for out there, but uh, I'm glad we were able to get it done and come home with some dinner. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it again for sure. It was, it was a good time. Thanks again, too, Chris. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. Straight stick has this. Straight curve? Well, yeah, like if you grow up with a straight stick, you're going to be forehand and backhand. You develop it as a kid. I'm skating with uh, Adam Oates. We've worked together now for four years. His view of the game is completely different from any other person that you talk to. And he, he can tell you himself that he picks up on things that people don't even think of. Your skates do not pass the puck. A coach wants execution. I played, I coached, I had a dad, right? So like, you know, I talked to my dad about my game, I played the game, I coached the game, so I kind of know what everybody wants. At the end of the day, we want a successful play. Ah, better. Let's see if I got it. I went to him for a reason, so if, if he tells me to try something different, why wouldn't I try? <laughs> when you think about a shutdown defenseman, yeah, their job is to play against the best players on the other team. But one thing that people don't think about, about a shutdown defenseman is you have to break your team out. It's the hardest play in hockey. Just as a defenseman, go back and be under control and take the puck and, and avoid being crushed by, by a four checker and, and then also find your, your teammate and give him the puck right on the tape. Six inches. Yes, you need that six inches of threat. Every skill matters everywhere. Yes. How would you describe your style as a defenseman? I think you've always kind of been labeled this quote unquote shut down defenseman. Do you accept that title? Do you like that title? How do you describe yourself? I don't know where, where they, that come from that the people label me the shut down defenseman. I would, don't think of myself as just a shut down defenseman. I grew up in Lipetsk, Russia. I have a twin sister and me and her started like figure skating 
at a really young age, like three and a half, four years old, we were already on the rink. I think I had fallen and, and hit my head and I cut my, my eye or something. I was bleeding and I was crying. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this. So my dad wanted me to play hockey anyways. So he's like, yeah, you're done with figure skating then. Let's get you into hockey. In 2008, I left Russia and I went to Canada to play juniors. I took a chance and went to junior league and I knew that there's going to be scouts watching and it was a year before my draft and there was basically nothing to lose for me. Like, why would I stay? I just came over with my gear. <laughs> Not even, I think. I don't remember. I think I, I didn't have any gear, no sticks, no nothing. The first thing I remember is the Billet family that the, the team put me in just took me straight to KFC. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was just focused on hockey and everything around wasn't really uh, important. He was the man on the back end in Drummondville. He ran the show, he played in every situation, he ran the power play, all the pucks went through him in every offensive situation and we, we projected that he would be a, a very uh, reliable offensive defenseman in the NHL. Panthers, I don't think I had an interview with them or... I don't remember it, to, to be honest with you. <laughs> Because he was Russian playing in North America in, uh, you know, in those early days, he was a, a bit of an enigma. And we felt he was a much better prospect than where we picked him. So we tried to keep things quiet about our level of interest, hoping he would drop to us. And as luck would have it, he did. We select from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, Dmitry Kulikov. They go offense, they go with a shooter, and they go Russian Bob and Gord. Dmitry Kulikov is an outstanding two-way defenseman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Training camp, work, 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 play some games, don't know what the hell is going on. I got to play with him when I was a rookie in the NHL and a few years after that. He had a Lamborghini when I pulled into the lot and I was kind of like I'd never seen a Lamborghini in my life. Ten games in that hit me that I'm playing in the NHL because we played at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. Like, I couldn't describe, it was unbelievable to me that I am here where two years prior to that, I was just, I was watching them and they were all considering my idols and now I'm playing against them. It's not a best part of business, I gotta say, because when you get traded, the way I thought about it is like, it's not that Buffalo wanted me, I, just like, I thought that Florida didn't want me anymore. And the year in Buffalo didn't go really well. I got hurt and I missed a lot of times and I played hurt most of the, most of the year. So that first like, trade experience wasn't, was unpleasant. As we go through our careers, we all adapt and change our style a little bit, but I think he's always had that offensive side in him. You know, he can play the defensive side too, so when you get a two-way D-man like that, that's exciting and it's good to add those two components and um, along with the experience, that's huge. Mason, another save, he's down, up to the crease, clear to the near side. He's a great teammate, he's a great person, he's of impeccable character and when you put those two things together we think that's part of the formula to building Stanley Cup champion. We get on that hip. Well, I'm kind of like not reinvented my game but I've focused more on on my defensive game. That's where I shine the last few seasons. I think that's what kind of gave me this a second life so once I wasn't viewed as an offensive defenseman anymore then people kind of switched their view and started calling me, you know, the shutdown defenseman. I can also move the puck and I can play an offensive game. Nothing wrong with scoring goals, so I like that too. Chance for Kulikov, a wide open net and he scores!
My wife is Emily. She's from Sweden. My oldest name is Maxton. He's uh, four and a half. And my smallest one is Evelina. She's turning two years old in October. We met here in Florida, but Dimitri's from Russia and I'm from Sweden, but then the kids are born here in the States. It was funny now when we were traveling and we got to Sweden and the guy at the border, he just looked at our passports and was like, so you're Swedish? And I was like, yeah. And he's Russian? Uh-huh. And the kid's American? Yeah. Hmm. Is it good, Maxton? Mm -hmm. You know what's in it? Mm -hmm. Can you guess? Pineapple? Yes. The kids don't seem to mind the different languages and in fact, Maxton is picked up on all three of them and he can speak English, Russian or Swedish, no problem. I taste it. It's easy when I'm alone with them, then it's only Swedish and then when he's alone with them, it's mostly Russian. She speaks her own language and thinks she speaks in all languages. <laughs> now that they're having full conversations, I, sometimes I'm, I'm getting lost. Maxton is an energizer. Most of the day he has nails up his butt and he just never sits still. <laughs> yeah. Yeehaw! Loves his little sister, that's Evelina. She's hilarious, she's so cool. I don't know anyone cooler than her. Sorry all of my girlfriends, but she's just awesome. All right, we'll see you at the house. This is all the fish we caught yesterday. I'm just gonna cut them all up and make little pieces because I think we're gonna make some uh, some poke bowls. There's some rice cooking in the kitchen now. I'm gonna add some vegetables to the poke bowl, some avocado, cucumbers, and then put that fish on top and it's gonna be delicious. Thinking that maybe Emily can start with an interview. So we met here in Florida. I think that's kind of why we settled down here too, because this always feels like home. But I was actually an au pair. So I went and I worked for a family and she was a little bit older. So she just wanted to do something during the weekends and stuff. So I said, let's go to hockey, because I'm from a hockey city back in Sweden. So we went to the game. So she wanted to sit like right behind the guys. Dimitri and I just kind of locked eyes a few times and then she decided that, okay, this is gonna happen. So she took a pen and paper and like wrote my name and number and handed it over to the equipment manager. <laughs> he texted like a week later. Um, we just met up. I'll see you on the beach. It's time for lunch. Unfortunately, Dimitri and I happen to live close enough to the ocean where we can use this as an amazing gym tool. Nothing better than nature being out there. We're going to celebrate his body as the most important piece of equipment. We have a bunch of light but effective functional training toys. We're going to do a blend of mobility, speed agility, quickness, and power. See a nice little soup of training going on right now. Hard, hard, come on, good. Personal trainer, Paul, his nickname is PC. Now corkscrew those hips into the ground, good, turn. We have that kind of relationship where I just, I tell him that, you know, this exercise doesn't work, I, I don't want to just do it for sake of doing it, let's, let's put a reason to this exercise. I'm getting ready for hockey season, I'm not just building a beach body. Five seconds, dig deep. He has a saying, don't cater a person to a workout, cater a workout to a person. He's a, a specimen, I mean, 6'1", 205 pounds, and moves with speed. It's impressive to see in person. Push, push, last 10 feet hard. Come on, good. The big thing with him is that he never puts the same workout 
for me. Nothing better than holding an unstable object with weight. So every step in the sand is an event. So you may uh, round your ankle, you may push off your ankle, invert, evert. So with that unique event, he's gonna experience the same thing in an uncontrolled environment against other hockey players. So to be able to have that nervous system, your brain prepared for that, is, is a direct adaptation for sand training onto the ice, because they're both unstable in their own way. Thrust, thrust, get off that ice. Good, push. Big effort, good, there you go. Big season, let's go. Good, big expectations. There's a great opportunity now, and you know, I plan to take advantage of it and showcase my talent and skills, and you know, hopefully get that stability that we're talking about and stay in Minnesota. Russian gas. <laughs> Just the way the, the team approached me, they made me feel like they really want me and that's, I guess, all I need as a player is if, is if the team is, is really wants you and they want to see you in the lineup and makes you feel appreciated and you, you, you just you want to play for, for that team. Good. Come on, big season. Let's go. Winning makes everything better. It just kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? contagious that that energy from winning so if you win every, it makes everything better around the rink at the rink if i can come in and, and help the team to that success it would be great three good come on two final one finish it up great job good <laughs>